perhaps the greatest lie ever perpetrated on populations all over the world is the condensation trail lie. What we're seeing in our skies is not condensation. It's sprayed particulate dispersions with very few exceptions. Now they shouldn't be there. Jet engines burn clean. So if there's anything coming out of them, it's an additive. They're absolutely not contrails. Contrails do not linger, dissipate, and go into cloud coverage, period, in the report. And I kept saying to people, you know, what is this? Because now the sky is no longer blue. It's starting to turn gray. And what I found was it's kind of like it was not socially acceptable. You know, we're all going to pretend this is not really happening. And I thought, oh, this is very bad. Most are unfamiliar with a science term called global dimming. That term refers to the amount of direct sunlight that no longer reaches the surface of the planet due to light scattering particles that are building up in the atmosphere. And although many of these particles are from industrialized pollution, the larger majority are from the ongoing climate engineering solar radiation management operations. bypass turbofan jet engine this is the engine that is on all military takers and all commercial carriers is in essence a jet powered fan 90 percent of the air that moves through this engine is non-combusted this engine by design is nearly incapable of producing any condensation trail except under rare and extreme circumstances and again and we have film footage of aircraft flying at altitude with nozzles visible turning on and off that is the end of the argument. Since even before man could fly, there was an effort to try to modify the weather. We have weather modification patents going back a hundred years plus. These are historical films of what can be done with a biplane, a small biplane that carries a very small payload. And that much can be done. How much more? Can a fully loaded military tank or KC-10, KC-135, C-17 Lowmaster, how much more material could they put in the air? About 500 times more than a single tanker. In regard to the condensation trail narrative, many refer back to the trails left by World War II bombers as proof that we are only seeing condensation trails in our skies. But GeoengineWatch.org found on military archives film footage, which we posted, of World War II B-17s at altitude, turning off a sprayed dispersion. We know that climate engineering was deployed immediately after World War II, so testing was absolutely ongoing. Clearly, these bombers were used for beta testing. Film footage proves it. Weather was a weapon used over Vietnam. Would you expect that to be then deleted from the availability, no. To continue to expand the scientific aspects of it, to have it available in your portfolio of weapons would be a natural process. Therefore, should you expect that it is available on demand to have the ability to modify weather? Absolutely, within this country and others. Climate engineering is the crown jewel of the military industrial complex. Climate engineering has been used to destabilize and topple nations all over the globe, facilitating military occupations by hostile countries like the US. We know that some of these countries are having their precipitation cut off because they have stated so on the floor of the UN, like the president of Iran stating emphatically that NATO weather modification programs were cutting off the precipitation to Iran, but US media never covered it. We have an economic model operating globally, which is operating based on covert force. And I have very serious questions after watching the financial patterns as to whether that financial force or that force includes weather warfare. People were coming to me telling me about this. So because of that, I went to the government in Ottawa under freedom of information. There was a 40 page report of which half the pages were completely blank and the other half had a lot of blank outs. But there was sufficient information to tell me that, yeah, they're aware. 
they call it geoengineering. One of the big problems is that when we find some new technology, we get all excited by it, by the, the potential benefits of that technology. Check out the rest of this documentary. I'll leave the link below.